Welcome to God and Coffee. <laughs> Welcome to Motivation with Bernard Smalls. I'm here with coffee, and we're here to enjoy a day of success motivation. Well, you know, Scripture said God gives us richly all things to enjoy. We study success motivation from a biblical practice, a biblical principle, because I believe it's time for the believer to understand spiritual practices. See, for so long, we've just been going to church, being religious, going through the rituals. Well, Jesus wants effectiveness, and effectiveness comes by understanding principles and living by the principles of the kingdom of God. See, the kingdom of God is God's way of doing things, and the way God does things is by faith, because Romans says, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when we hear the word of God, that's good, but that's not enough. Now we must apply the word of God. So all of that comes back to why motivation with Bernard Smalls, because we are training you to be a success. We are teaching you the word of God also, but of course, training you how to apply the word of God in your life. So you could call this applied Christianity. Say after me, applied Christianity. See, Christianity was never intended just to be in some religious book, but lived out in the world. And that's one reason why the church has not had, well, more impact and effect, because uh, we, we need to be like Gandhi, and we need to be the change we want to see in the world. Well, does the scripture teach success? Does the scripture teach prosperity? Does the scripture teach the abundant life? See, all of those things Things that the word teaches are there for a reason because if we don't do them, we're not doers of the word, we're not blessed in our deed, then we have little to no effect on the world. <laughs> Can I get an amen? <laughs> Cheers. Well, we started out with a bang today. <laughs> now let's move into success motivation again. We're talking about the subject of success and what success really is and what biblical success is. And as I said in my prelude, my introduction, that we need to be the success we want to see in the world. Be the change you want to see in the world, as Mahatma Gandhi said it. By the way, we quote lots of great um, men and women of the past in this uh, setting because I believe that wisdom is found in a lot of the motivational and inspirational quotes. All right, here's what we're going to do today. Let's take a little time to recapitulate what we have covered thus far. Far. We've talked about success. What is success? We say that success is a journey, not a destination. Many people fail in life because they think it's all in arriving. It's all in getting. Let's say you wanted to make your first million dollars. You made your million dollars. What next? Nothing fails like success. Well, once you have gotten to the place where you, well, you have the million dollars, what are you going to do next? Journeys are continuous, and I want you to get on a journey of success. See, so many of you are just striving to arrive, but once you arrive, what you got? Nothing fails like success. Now, here's why. When you're striving to be a success, you're scrapping, you're working, you're, you're fasting, you're fighting, you're doing whatever you can to make success. But once you have made success and you're living the American dream, sometimes it becomes the American nightmare. What's next? So success is a journey, not a destination. Say after me, success is a journey. Scripture says we walk by faith, not by sight. Didn't say we run by faith. There's a vast difference. You can walk a lot further than you can run. So we're talking about a Joshua 1-8 journey. We're saying get on the journey and go to work. Okay, in our recap, let's simply look at the headings from each day, and then we'll move on to a new day. First of all, day one, we said, is the process of success. Success is a process, but you must engage in consistent actions on the process to be successful. Well, Joshua chapter one, verse eight, as I quote, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, written where? In the 
the book of the law. For then thou shalt, King James says, make your way prosperous. Then thou or you shall have good success. So notice the process of success. The process is, first of all, information. You got to get the right information. If you got the wrong information, you're going to be messed up. And the danger of the information world is there's so much misinformation. Get the word of God and you're getting the right information. So you got the word of God in your mouth. That is affirmation. Remember, we're walking through a, pro a process here. Next, it goes on to say, but you shall meditate. Now, we have principle number three in the process, meditation. You remember 75% of what you say. But when you say it, your conscious mind is engaged. Your mouth is engaged. Your motor skills are engaged of tonality or however you say it. And you remember it because it's written. Another thing about speaking, words spoken impact the subconscious mind. In fact, your continuous affirmation goes down into your subconscious mind and controls your life. And really, that's the process of success. The process of success is simply getting the word into your, well, let's just use a biblical phrase, spirit. Success is really subconscious because when you have the right information, you have the right affirmation, you have the right meditation, you will have the right action, which is application. And that's where the success, the success is in the doing. James 1.22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourself. See, if you're not doing the word, you're deceiving yourself. You need to get heavy doses of the word, meditate on the word, engage in renewing your mind to the word, then put that word in your mouth because the word is nigh thee or near you, <laughs> but the word of God is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. Well, when it's in your mouth, that's affirmation. When it's in your heart, that's meditation. And when it's in your action, that's application. So you got application of the information that you have spent time in meditation because you got the right information to affirm, to meditate, and to apply. Then you'll make your way prosperous. Then you will have good success. The way to true success and lasting success is the word of God. All right, so the process of success. Next, as we review and recap what we've covered so far in this series, is day two, which is developing clarity. Clarity is very important. And clarity simply means you have a vision. Scripture says where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is a foggy vision, the people can't see where they're going. Imagine that you are captain of a big vessel and you are navigating through a river and it's foggy. Well, you better have something to show you where to go or you end up hitting something, okay? Or having a, a devastating tragedy that could cost human life. It's simply because you couldn't see clearly, but you wanted clear visibility. The goal-oriented person has grasped the concept of hope and sees clearly through the eye of Faith. So you've got to be able to see clearly if you're going to be a success. Day number three is to write your vision statement. Now, I believe you should have a vision statement, which is basically your vision. But you need to put it in words and put it on paper. Remember Habakkuk said, write the vision, make it plain, make it clear, make it crystal clear so he may run that reads it. Now, I know that um, King James says, write the mission. But if you study that word very carefully, you'll notice that the mission relates to and is married to the vision. Let's say you say, my vision is to eradicate poverty consciousness which is a part of our vision here with our, our global ministry. We want to eradicate poverty consciousness from the minds of the people of I am. I didn't say eradicate poverty. I said poverty consciousness. Because if I can change your consciousness, I can change your poverty. So indirectly, we are eradicating poverty poverty. Now, that's a vision statement. Well, the mission is teaching people how to live happily and successfully. So do you see how the two work together? In fact, you don't want a mission statement that's contrasting or contradicting your, your vision statement. And, and I implore you, get Destiny of the Third Millennium by Peter 
uh, Jay Daniels. I represent his uh, company here in Atlanta and in America with the Destiny program. And you simply go to centerforiam.com, click on the eagle image, scroll down and click on the eagle, and it'll pull up this Destiny program. Because Mr. Daniels does the best job at articulating vision, mission, values, goals, commitment, clarity. Man, it'll help you to get your act together. And one of the big things among entrepreneurs is they're failing because they lack focus, they lack clarity. And Mr. Daniels went broke three times, totally broke, belly up three times, but now he is a billionaire. And to become a billionaire through these principles, who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a billionaire? Well, question is, who wants to be mentored? <laughs> because everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Okay, so you got to have a clear vision statement, and you want to write that vision statement. So thank you for tuning in to Motivation. I'm Bernard Smalls, and I am actually a local pastor in the Atlanta area. We have recently started our church, and it's Prevailing Word Pavilion. So go to the website, which is prevailingwordnow.com, and click on the meetings tab, and we'd love to have you come out and see us. And we teach success. We teach prosperity. We teach that God wants you rich. So if you want to hear that, and you want to learn that, and you want to understand that, you need to come to the Prevailing Word Pavilion, which is a place of protection and peace. Cheers. So we teach the word of God, and I'd, I'd love to see you. Because here's the deal. God said, my church is not what I want it to be. It's not what it's supposed to be. He said that to me. So I want you to start a church that illustrates and demonstrates the kingdom of God in the realm of success motivation. We're teaching faith. We're teaching prosperity. We're teaching give, give, give. And it's supposed to be give and take, and we believe in giving, but become entrepreneurs and have something to give. If you're going to have a ministry of giving, you're going to have to have a ministry of getting. And the ministry of getting is prospering, not by greed, but by applying the word. So again, we're not perfect, but we're endeavoring to do our part in establishing the kingdom of God entrepreneurially. All right, and that's Prevailing Word Pavilion. Go to our website now and check it out. Okay, day number four in our recap is your words frame your world. We said that the law of attraction is biblical. And one of the keys to the law of attraction is your affirmation. Making the right affirmation or the, in the old days we call it confession. The word affirmation I like because it's affirmative. In fact, affirm this after me. I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhabit my mind. Say it again. I forbid thoughts of failure and defeat to inhabit my mind. Now remember, Jesus said you can have what you say. You can have what you say you can have because whosoever shall say unto that mountain, not think about the mountain, not pray about the mountain, not meditate about the mountain, not fast about the mountain, but say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. So now I see the law of attraction in that. Why? The law of attraction is this. What you think about you bring about. Say, what I think about, I bring about. And here's why. Thoughts are things. A thought is an unspoken word, while a word is a spoken thought. And your word frames your world so the things come from the spoken thoughts. Now, the reason is everything is energy, and a thought is energy. And when you speak a positive word, you are releasing positive energy because you're releasing positive thought. So what are we talking about here? The way you activate the law is affirmation. Well, what does this have to do with the law of attraction? The law of attraction says what you think about, you bring about. Because what you think about, you speak. And what you speak is attracted and drawn into your life. Because that which is like is drawn. That draws to itself. Meaning, it's called the law of attraction. It's really in Genesis. I believe it's the same as the law of Genesis, which is everything reproduces is after its kind. What did God attract? His kind. Everything was made after his kind. So don't throw away the law of attraction. It's making many people billionaires. And one thing we do in our training and in our church services and our teaching is we teach things like the law of attraction. I have a teaching. Is the law of attraction biblical? And we answer it with scripture. We're teaching biblical success principles.
We are doing a review and a recap of what we have covered so far in this series of teachings. And I'm Bernard Smalls, founder and teacher at Prevailing Word Pavilion. You can visit us online at prevailingwordnow.com. And we teach principles of success and motivation. I believe that my ministry is like a, a special arms division of the body of Christ. You know, special arms, which are, it's like a military group that is trained to go into special areas of strategic warfare. And our strategic warfare is prosperity and success, but not prosperity the old way we have been taught prosperity. Now, I am not against the old way, but we need more application than just confession. See, in the Word of Faith movement, which I, I grew up in, I, I was born again, is this okay? I'm just sharing a little reality today. Under the ministry of Dr. Frederick Casey Price Sr., the dad, not the son, of course. 1974, I graduated from high school. Soon as I graduated, playing with a band, a funk band, we had a deal, potential deal with Motown. True story. And we went from Charleston, South Carolina. I lived in a little town called Oakley, and that's near Monk's Corner. From Oakley to Oakland, interesting, huh? California. And we were working out. And I remember the Motown guy showed me how to do push-ups and, and broaden your chest and shoulder. It looked like a, a beast on the stage, they were basically saying, because, uh, you know, musicians, you need to look the part when you're on the stage. So anyway, they had us outfitted and all this stuff, and we were playing in the Bay Area. Area. That uh, deal fell apart. And to fast forward, when I was playing with the band and was making some money, but the Motown deal was off the table, God started dealing with me. My bass player rededicated his life to Jesus Christ, told me about it. Uh, he had rededicated, which means to recommit your life to Jesus. And I was going to accept Christ for the first time into my life. Even though I was a Methodist, I was raised in a Methodist church. Granddaddy was a Methodist preacher. Daddy was uh, a Methodist preacher. I had never been born again. So that day on the phone, I accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Well, the lady that led me to Christ was the mother of the bass player, and she attended a church named Crenshaw Christian Center, which was pastored by Fred Price. Now, I know this is a little history lesson, but that it's in Inglewood, California. I came into this thing hearing prosperity. So what do I believe? Prosperity. But let me get back to my point. Most of the prosperity teaching was about confessing the word. But now we're talking about affirmation, motivation, application through doing the word and being entrepreneurs. They taught doing the word, but I think God by his spirit was working so hard to get us to see the message of confession that that was the first thing we needed to see. Our words have power. Now we know our words have power, so let's get our words and our actions agreeing because uh, corresponding actions, faith without corresponding actions is dead. And what we've had is churches full of people confessing, 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 but not possessing because they ain't acting. They are not acting. So be a doer of the word means to take these principles and apply them to your life. All right, someone needed to hear my testimony. So I pray that it blesses you. We're moving forward with <laughs> the word of God. Okay, day five is prosperity. And we talked about the fact that we need to understand the abundance mindset. John Wesley said, when a man becomes a Christian, he becomes industrious, trustworthy, and prosperous. And we said that prosperity is having whatever you need. Now that's what we have covered thus far in 40 days of success. All right, now let's move into day six. Day six and 40 days of success. By the way, go to my website, which is prevailingwordnow.com. Go to the Bernard Smalls Library and get your copy of 40 Days of Success. Click on it, download it. There's a modest investment, but anything you invest in goes back to helping us teach the word. So look at it as sowing seed, giving, and you getting blessed by getting the material. And then you can follow along with me on this program because I believe that for a season, this is the topic to show you how to be prosperous, how to be successful. All right, day number six is personal development. Personal development is so important. When I was pastoring a church in Anchorage, Alaska, I learned the importance of personal development because I was listening to some of the motivational speakers of America that were popular back in that day. And this was, um, you know, years ago when I started my first church.
church. We're, we're starting again here. I'm thinking, Lord. But we started prevailing. We're an outreach church in Anchorage, Alaska. And the guys like uh, Zig Ziglar, who has passed on, Jim Rowan, and many of the, the great motivators of the day were teaching motivational concepts. Guys like W. Clement Stone, success through a positive mental attitude. And I was always attracted to that for some reason. And even some of my church members, I'll never forget a church a church member says, well, why are you starving us by teaching all this motivational stuff? We need to hear the Bible. <laughs> and every high thing that was exalting itself against the knowledge of God. But he didn't like the fact that I was teaching all this motivational stuff. He said, you, you teach faith and then you feed us the word of faith and we grow and we, we expand, then you come back to teach this motivational stuff. And I didn't fully understand it then, but now looking back on it, that was one of the wisest things I did because it wasn't my wisdom, it was the wisdom of God to help people to be doers, not just hearers. See, we want to hear about prosperity, we want to hear about money cometh, we want to hear about the blessing of the Lord making rich, but why don't we go into business? Why don't we become entrepreneurs? And what I saw was when we started teaching this stuff, Stuff, entrepreneurs started to emerge and they were the biggest givers in the church. Okay, so you pastors wondering where your win your income is, wondering why your church is struggling. You need to train and raise up entrepreneurs. You should check out Jesus' teaching on occupy till I come. Very important. The word occupy, occupy in the Greek means to be pragmatic. And Jesus showed them they needed to go to work with the money he had given them and multiply that money. Well, why not invest in yourself? Become an entrepreneur. Start a business create something of value. That's going to require what's called personal development. Very few understand personal development. Personal development is this. Okay. When I started to understand personal development and how important it is, we started to see that as a part of the calling of God, out of which birth motivation with Bernard Small. It's not just something I had in a pipe dream. Christians need to learn to be motivated all the time to be effective. And a part of that is personal development. For instance, most leaders even don't have their act together in the area of personal development. One of the things I looked at first is how they manage time. You have an appointment at noon with a pastor. It's 1220 and he's just calling you to say, I'm running a little late. <laughs> Come on, folks. That old dog won't hunt. That's not how it's done. That's not excellence. So we started doing what we call commitment to excellence seminars. And the management of time was one of our major themes. And years and years and years later, I would find out that that Ben Franklin said, dost thou love life, don't waste time. It's the stuff life's made of. And then my success mentor, Peter Daniels, he's a fanatical guy about the management of time. So I started to see how important time management was. Time management is a personal thing. I don't manage your time. You manage your time. If you're late, it's your fault. Well, but the traffic was heavy. Why didn't you leave earlier? <laughs> okay, so personal development has to do with getting your personal act together. And that's what success that's motivation is all about. It really is about personal development. See, we're thinking about the body of Christ at large, the church. What about you? What about your life? Romans chapter 12, verse 1, Phillips. I beg you, my brothers, as an act of intelligent worship, to give him your bodies as a living sacrifice, consecrated to him, accepted or acceptable by him. Make this affirmation after me. I am open to receiving wealth. Now, success demands action, and action is taking charge of your life under God's direction. And the way you do that is through the renewing of your mind. Scripture says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23, And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Why? Your attitude controls your altitude. And you need to go to work on personal development, making you a better you. Remember Mahatma Gandhi, be the change you want to see in the world. All right, now let's have a quick workshop. And it's a real simple workshop today. I call this workshop V. A M. The V is for visualize or visualization. The A is for affirm or affirmation. And the M, you got it, is for meditation. I want you to take 15 minutes today visualizing the desired result you want in your life. Meaning, what is the mountain in your life? Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, what do you do? You close your eyes and you see your life the way you want it. Cheers. And 
you move into A. So you visualize the mountain's gone. You affirm the mountain's gone, the mountain's gone, the mountain's gone, because whosoever shall say unto this mountain. So now you're applying faith pressure to the mountain. Affirm. And then I want you to M, meditate. Say meditate. Meditate on the desired end result. Winners always begin with the end in mind. So we're visualizing, affirming, and meditating. If you want to learn more about that, check out my book, I Am Affirmations to Create Wealth, which is available at an instant download at our website as an ebook. Or you could get it at Amazon.com. I don't care how you get it as long as you get it. PrevailingWordNow. Dot com. Go to the Bernard Smalls Library and get it. And we go in depth into the process of visualizing, affirming, and meditating. Now, we don't go so uh, in depth that it's some empirical, um, you know, uh, thesis. But we go into more of the understanding of this. And then we give you, in that book, well over 50 affirmations. Remember, success is a process. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I trust that today's teaching has been an encouragement to you. If you enjoyed what you hear, you might want to consider getting our program, 40 Days of Success. By the way, an investment in the program supports the work here. We never pull for money, and we're not here to take. We are here to give. We are here to be a blessing. But if you do purchase the program, the profits from that go back into the work we are doing if you are a Facebooker, if you're on Facebook, you might go to Prevailing Word Pavilion and like us and follow us there where we have over 42,000 followers as we speak. So we're reaching people around the world. Um, recently, um, well, I won't go into all the details, but we provided some aid for um, a church and a work in India and in Africa. And we're, we're not here just trying to get, we're here to give. So as you invest in the program, you get the program, you get to grow, and we are blessed with the finances, God's unspeakable gift. So how do you get it? You go to my website, which is prevailingwordnow.com. Go to the Bernard Smalls Library and click on the simple well, little book there. You'll see 40 Days of Success. Get that one. And if you want to give by traditional mail, what we call snail mail, our address is P.O. Box 724, Swanee, Georgia, 30024. That's P.O. Box 724, Swanee, Georgia, 30024. And we thank you so much for your prayer and your support. And we're here for your success. My mission is real simple. I want to teach you how to live happily and successfully. If you're in the Atlanta area and looking for a place to fellowship, we are a hybrid church, meaning we meet online and we meet in person. You can learn more by going to our website, which is prevailingwordnow.com, clicking on the meeting tab, and it'll tell you where our next meeting is. Well, got to go. Thank you so much for joining me. And my prayer as always is this, may God, the great I am, expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled. I'll see you next week.